I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you about the mathematics of aviation. Primarily, we're talking binary, octal, and hexadecimal. Actually, it's the same mathematics you need to know to program most computer systems. Commercial aircraft, such as the 737, have avionics packages that have to be programmed for each individual aircraft and or carrier that is operating the aircraft. Some examples are air traffic control, autopilot, emergency location transmitter, heads-up display, flight management computer, and selective calling, usually called CELCAL. The programming method used for these option codes is called the DIP switch. DIP switches operate exactly the same way that your standard household appliance power switch operates. When you push the zero, it turns off the device, and you push the one, it turns the device on. Likewise, DIP switches have an on and an off position. For the following systems, this is how the dip switch is read. When the switch is positioned so you can see a red dot, that means the switch is on and represents a logic 1. Move the switch down to cover the dot, that means it's off and is a logic 0. The one system on a 737 that doesn't follow this standard is CellCal. I don't know, maybe the CellCal engineers were on vacation the day all the other engineers got together and say, we're all going to follow the same standard. Anyway, CellCal reads the switches backwards. The switch being on is a logic 0, the switch being off is a logic 1. For the rest of this video, we'll just ignore CellCal. Let me give you an example of what kind of information these dip switches can convey. While flying, the airplane is constantly talking to the air traffic controllers on the ground. In order for the controllers to know who they're talking to, each aircraft has a unique number assigned to it called the mode S address. As you might expect from this video, this address comes from a dip switch module. Sometimes it's called the AA code, or aircraft address. Another system tied directly to this mode S address is TCAS. That's a traffic collision avoidance system. TCAS keeps track of other aircraft in the vicinity and can even issue commands to prevent an in-air collision. On the navigation screen, TCAS will show the surrounding aircraft traffic, bearing, distance, and relative altitude. Additionally, it will tell you the threat status of the other aircraft. For example, this white diamond is no threat. The yellow circle is a potential threat. Keep an eye on them and a red square is a direct threat. Action must be taken to avoid collision. As a technician, we can operationally test the TCAS with a test set such as this IFR 6000. The test set can transmit a fake signal and fool the TCAS into thinking there's an airplane approaching. Then we simply look for the proper indications on the nav screen. For this to happen, the test set wants to know what the mode S code for the aircraft under test is. Here's the problem we run into. The test set wants the code entered as a hexadecimal number. And if you remember from the beginning of the video, a dip switch produces a binary number. Or if you're looking at a wiring diagram, they usually list the mode S code in octal. So to run this test, you need to be able to convert from binary or octal to hexadecimal. I'd like to show you two ways to do this conversion. The first and the easiest will be to use a calculator. And the second, if you're not around a computer, I'll show you how to do the conversions manually. Computers running the Windows operating system have a calculator built into them. You'll find it located in the Accessory folder. When you first open it, it looks like your simple, basic, average calculator. But if you click on the View pull-down menu, you'll want to select the option labeled Programmer. Remember, I said this is the same math you use when you're programming computers. Anyway, you can now convert between hex, decimal, octal, and binary. Click on the BIN button. This will allow you to enter your binary number. Enter your mode S address code. Note that the calculator ignores leading zeros. Now you want to click on the button labeled HEX, H-E-X. The HEX number 3 Alpha Charlie 421 has the same numerical value as that long string of ones and zeros you entered. Select the OCT button to see it in octal. And the DEC will show you in decimal. It can also work in reverse. You want to convert a hexadecimal number to binary. Select H-E-X. Then enter your hexadecimal number. Notice the letters A through F on the keypad are actually part of the hexadecimal numbering system. Select the BIN button for binary. If you ever change the mode S dip switch settings, you can use this method to verify that you've set them correctly. Now, if you're out in the field and you don't have access to a computer, let me show you how to do this conversion manually. First, a quick look at how the numbering systems are different. The decimal numbering system taught in school today has a base 10. This means there are 10 different numbers used, 0 through 9. 
While you're counting up, once you get to the 9, you've run out of numbers. So you place a 1 in the next digit over, then start over with the numbers. The octal numbering system has only 8 numbers in it, 0 through 7. So as you're counting up, once you hit 7, just like you do in decimal, you place a 1 in the next digit, then start over. Now if you want to represent really large numbers, use hexadecimal. Hexadecimal has 16 digits in it. The number 0 through 9 followed by the letters A through F. While counting, you cycle through the numbers just like you did in decimal or octal. But when you get to the number 9, then you continue with A through F. After F, increment a 1 in your next digit, then start over. Finally, we get to the ultimate in simplicity, binary. Binary has two digits, either a 0 or a 1. Start out with 0, add a 1, and that's it. Now you're ready to increment the next digit and start over. Okay, that's enough for number review. Let's get back to work. Binary is like the Rosetta Stone for allowing you to convert between octal and hexadecimal and vice versa. To make this work, we want to come up with a list showing the binary equivalent of each of the numbers on this page. To do this, all you have to do is know how to add the number 1 to any other number. Let's start out with 0. Add 1 and you get 1. Add 1 again and you get 1, 0. Plus 1 is 1, 1. Plus another 1 increment to 1, 0, 0. Here's the reason why these binary numbers work so well for conversion. Notice the largest number you can represent with three digits happens to be the number 7. Coincidentally, the largest number in octal is also 7. So this means these octal numbers and these three digit binary numbers are equivalent. You'll also notice the largest four digit binary number you can have is the same value as the hexadecimal letter F. Because of this characteristic, the binary numbers can actually substitute for the octal or hexadecimal number. Let me show you a shortcut instead of coming up with two separate binary lists. You'll notice that these numbers here are identical, with the exception of the leading zero here. So all you really have to do is create the hexadecimal list. Then if you need octal, simply remove all the four digit numbers that start with a one. Then remove the leading zero and the remaining numbers. Now you have a perfectly good binary to octal list. We now have everything we need for our number conversion. Remember our mode S binary code? Let's convert that to hexadecimal. Trust me, no math is required now. We need four binary numbers for each hexadecimal number. So, starting on the right hand side, go ahead and break your mode S code down into groups of four. If for some reason you didn't have enough numbers to fill in this last group, just add some zeros. Zeros on the left hand side of a number does not change the value of that number. Now look at each group one at a time. 0001 happens to be hexadecimal 1. 0010 is a 2. Continue on for each of your groups. There you go. We now know this binary number is 3 alpha charlie 421 in the hexadecimal number format. Hey, and we even did it without a calculator. Since we're having so much fun, let's convert it to octal. This time we break your binary number down to groups of 3. And like you did before, convert each group of 3 to your octal number. If you're a bit skeptical that it's actually that easy, let's check it and make sure it's correct. Open up my programming calculator. Type in my hexadecimal number and then convert it to octal. You can see both those numbers are actually equal. Okay, you've seen how easy it is to convert from binary to hexadecimal or octal. What about converting from hexadecimal to octal? The trick is first convert the hexadecimal to binary, then the binary to octal. You can see A is 1010 and 6 is 0110. Now, like before, we go back and break the binary number into groups of three. Not enough numbers to fill out that last group? Throw a zero in there. Now you can easily convert that to octal. So hexadecimal 6 alpha is equal to 152 octal. To go the other direction, octal to hexadecimal, we follow the same procedure. Break the binary number down into groups of four. 
If you wind up with an extra zero on the left hand side, simply delete it. But remember, only add and subtract zeros on the left side of the binary number, never the right side. Convert your groups to hexadecimal, and you're done. There you go. Now you're ready to head back out into your backyard and get back to work on that 737. Thanks for watching.